Avid House has a big mission. Uh, there's a lot of disadvantaged uh, young people in the world. Avid House is there to take care of others, to support others, to make others feel better and have better lives. Our society for a long time has been remedial. We get involved after something bad has happened. But if we can get involved with kids and families before and give them the supports they need, teach them the skills they need, then they can in fact not get into any trouble and we can prevent bad things from happening. We'll increase the likelihood of them graduating from school, keeping their housing, staying intact with their family. Abbott House has a certain distinction and a credibility for putting their families first. We provide basic housing, medical, mental health, education, religious services, and recreation. I just love working with children. Um, I see the need. I see the impact working with children has and the difference that it can make at such a young age. It's very important for Abbott House to be providing academic support for, for the children. Anne's made uh, an enormous uh, commitment to the community. She's put in an awful lot of time. She put in a lot of work. She's a highly respected woman, and I can't think of anybody uh, more deserving to be honored than uh, Anne. Anne was not only a great board member, but Anne was also a key member of the school board. But I believe that education from the early, early ed is an important developmental tool to help a child grow and learn. And I just think those are the things that, uh, uh, that are really important in the development of a child. Uh, unfortunately, with so many of our of children today, because of poverty or other family conditions, they don't get the greatest support for the value of education. I started out in the early 1970s here as a volunteer. When I saw the little children, I was hooked immediately. And they are truly taken care of in a way that we would hope all children would be taken care of. Karen is a great recipient for the award because she is a person that I've known for well over 20 years. And during that time, she had wrapped her arms around the students. She brought her intelligence, she brought her knowledge of the community, and uh, just did a great job. And she not just supported in words, she supported them in deeds. And I salute Karen for that. Not long ago, I went to the Dunkin' Donuts, and there I met Howard. And Howard lives in one of our homes for the developmentally disabled, and has been working for I stop and shop for more than 20 years. I said, how are you doing? Are you here for a second breakfast? And he said, yeah, I love to do this. I realized at that moment, quite forcibly, that he goes to work by himself, and he is even able to stop at, at Dunkin' Donuts and buy something with the money that he earns. So he has some control over his life. And Abbott House made that possible for him because of the home where he lives and the fact that he is secure there and can make a life. The Mercy College women's lacrosse team helps to make our adults here feel like they're part of the community. These girls take the time to come up to Abbott House and play basketball with our developmentally disabled adults. Each player here has something unique about them. Charlie, he is always the first one to come up to us and, you know, say, oh, how many girls do you have here? We have one, two, three, and he counts off everybody. Juan is the most competitive. Yeah, yeah. his dribbling is amazing. Justin, they can do like Justin the goal, can like the ball moves, like running yeah. down the court. I'm like, wow. Who's the best player on the Mercy College team? All of them. All of them. Yeah. yeah, they talk to God. Yeah. These men are really just truly amazing. They're so nice. We enjoy coming here to see them because they make us feel so welcome and almost like family. Just the factor of, you know, showing up and just making somebody's day, you know, you don't know what anybody's going through. I don't think you should ever judge somebody by their cover. Pick yourself up and put yourself in their shoes for a minute and try to really communicate with them heart to heart. They have something special about them. And I am so proud that I can call these guys my friends. The Wendell family, through their donation of their time and materials, um, really helps these children to become more relaxed. I think that art is a way for the kids to express 
whatever it is that they want or need to express at any given time. These kids are like heroes. They've gone through so much. And they get there, and some of them are sad. But by the end of it, you know, everybody's laughing. And it's just, it's, it's, art is amazing. Art can really, I think, transport you. The Wendell family just didn't stop there. They've gone and sought out other volunteers to help. At first, working with the kids was slightly intimidating because it's a different, a little bit of a language barrier, and it was hard to communicate. But since then, we, we just all connected so well. It's been such a great time. You feel so good. You know, just, it's just so uplifting being, you know, with this group of children. Whatever problem you thought you had coming in here, you don't have any problems compared to what these kids have been through. And um, it just kind of puts life into perspective. Seeing these kids coming from these backgrounds makes me appreciate how I grew up a lot, um, but also makes me quite sad and wants to make me give back to them. The kids feel like if they're doing it for us, we're going to grow up one day and do it for somebody else. There was one girl who was here for a while, and it, every week we'd come back and we got to know her because she was here for a number of months. This is a, a child who was born prematurely. She came here very weak. Her, her weight was about 41 pounds, and she is uh, 55 inches tall, very undernourished. We discovered that she had a heart murmur. I did ask to help us obtain an electric wheelchair, and we were able to get that thanks to you. She was a child who usually stayed doing some activities on the table, but when the wheelchair came in, they played dancing, and she was tired dancing with a wheelchair. Today, she's a changed girl, uh, and that thanks to the generosity of all of you. By the end, I, I think just to see that transition that she had undergone at the Abbott House was very um, special. We all have different populations in our communities that are underserved and who are are in need of more help. And the Abbott House works to provide th those services, not only to the children in the TRC program, but also disabled adults and foster care children. It's really important for our community to get involved so that we can help those individuals. Abbott House has saved so many young people and continues to save young people that I speak here today. And without Abbott House supporting these young people, they would end up in jail, they would end up dead. We do need the extra support. Uh, Abbott House would not exist without the extra support from the community. If anyone was looking to donate or come volunteer that, they will not regret it. And it's probably one of the best things that they You've will ever, ever do. Yeah. And this is definitely one of the best things I've ever done. People often think that one person can't make a difference, but it is one person that makes a difference.